everybody chose this super serious music, very dramatic posing, like, oh, I'm so serious, look at me up on stage. And I decided I was just gonna do a skit, basically. Hello, everybody. Darren Starr here. Welcome to the two days post-show recap of my contest prep journey for the Battle at the River, June 8th, 2024, Chattanooga, Tennessee. It's done. We did it. We did it. I am now back in Oregon. Um, I've been here since yesterday, the day after the show. Story for another time. We'll get into that later. Um, I wanted to talk today and just do a quick recap of the show, how things went. I don't think I have a whole lot to show uh, right now. I don't have any official photos. I have some that I pulled off of Facebook that my wife took, um, but other than that, a little lacking on the goods. So I want to still kind of stick to a few different segments here. Um, so let's just uh, dive into it and go for it. So we're going to start with both of these things, past tense combined, how things looked and how things felt. In a word, things did not feel good. Uh, for the week leading into peak week, I felt like I was improving, but I still felt off, like my stomach was off. Um, just I could tell like digestion was really slow. Uh, I was monitoring my weight really closely throughout the day, every day. I didn't really have any concerns that I was going to uh, make weight, although it was still weighing on my mind a little bit, which was causing a little bit of stress. Uh, things just didn't feel particularly tight. I had a massage on Wednesday, which was much needed. My legs were so sore from that on Thursday, I was worried that they weren't necessarily going to clear up by the time Saturday rolled around. They largely did, for the most part. Uh, but uh, I, I held off, like I mentioned last week in the podcast episode last week, which was related to this as well. I mentioned that I was going to hold off on the carb up until after I weighed in, so I wasn't going to do anything on Thursday. Weigh-in started at 5 on Friday. After that, I'd go back to our Airbnb in Chattanooga where we were staying and uh, get in a couple of carb meals then that night and then continue carbing up Saturday morning going into the show, just pulling back protein portions a little bit to make room for some extra carbs without blowing up the midsection too much. I didn't blow it up too much, but it just felt unsettled. It did feel a little distended still. Just, you know, there's that load grade stress that's been there for weeks now and that didn't go away. Um, and so I just kind of walked on stage carrying that with me as well. Did not feel particularly tight. Felt like I got an okay pump backstage. Uh, There's plenty of time for it. The trick with doing that is knowing how to time things correctly. So you really just kind of have to watch the stage, listen, see what's going on, get an idea for how quickly things are moving. Um, once your category starts lining up, for me that was classic physique, uh, they do true novice and then novice. And then they started in with Masters after that. I was in Masters 40 plus, which was the earliest Masters class. Or was there a 35 plus? Honestly, I don't remember at this point. But there were enough guys in True Novice and Novice. Like if I would have started pumping up when they got on stage, that probably would have been better. Instead, I feel like I got a good pump and then kind of lost it and wasn't able to sustain it. So then I went back for some extra carbs. Shouldn't have done that um, because that kind of made the midsection a little bit worse. Next time around, I would rather go on stage a little flat, a little suboptimal perhaps, um, and just you know know that that's the case rather than being you know as filled out as I possibly can but unable to control the midsection, especially going into it knowing that that was going to be a concern just because of how the previous five weeks have gone basically. like I feel like I felt and looked my best at prep five weeks out, and then everything went south after that with travel and family stuff. so it was uh, really difficult to kind of keep it together and be feeling optimal. So things didn't feel great. I don't think things looked great necessarily. And I'm not trying to make excuses or anything like that. It's just the reality of the situation. So um, that's uh, how things felt and how things looked. So now, new section here that we'll only get to see once. Yeah, how things played out, pre-judging edition. Let's dig into it. So I get up on stage. The first class that I'm in is Masters 40 Plus. There were three of us up there. We walked out. Uh, it was two other guys uh, left and center and then me on the right. Uh, they blazed us through mandatories. I even think they skipped a pose. They were just like, okay, let's get a quick look at these guys. All right. They had the other two guys trade places. Meanwhile, like I'm kind of looking like here. From my vantage point on the stage, I'm looking out 
past the judges, past the audience. You know, where do you look? I don't know. I, I didn't know anybody out there in pre-judging. My wife was there for the show, but not for the morning show. She had somewhere else to be that morning. <laughs> she, just, she had an appointment that was on the same day that was months old as well. So um, she came back for finals, but she wasn't there. So there was nobody for me in the audience. So I didn't have anybody to try and make eye contact with or anything like that. And so I'm just scanning around, scanning around. Eventually I look down and, you know, bright lights, bright lights. And so I look down at the judges table and I can see like they are not looking at me at all. They are not <laughs> looking my way. And I can hear what they're saying. They're talking about the other two guys. I'm like, this is great. All right. So cool. They've had those two guys switch places. They're looking at them. So awesome. Third out of three for me. Great. So that was a little defeating. I didn't really care for that. And of course, you don't know after pre-judging. Everybody just walks off stage with their assumptions. And uh, yeah, that's that's all you have. <laughs> just your, your, skibby and your skibbies and your assumptions. That's all you walk off stage with. Uh, so then you go backstage and try and get a little bit more of a pump up. You got another couple classes and then Open C walks out. It's me and four other guys. So five guys in that class. Um, and again, uh, they, just by the order that we walk out in, they've got me in the middle, which is great. They move me out of the middle pretty much immediately uh, after like two poses. And again, they're like, you know, front pose, turn around, back double bicep, face the front. And then they had to swap places like very quick. That's all they cared about. It was just like, let's look at a couple things here. Okay, cool. And then they, uh, they have us trade places. And, uh, at that point we run through all the mandatories and again, I can, I look down, I can see I'm like, they're, they're talking. I can't hear anything. I can't really make out who they're looking at or what they're saying or anything like that at the judges table. Um, they have a couple other guys trade places and then they dismiss three of us and they have done this before. So there aren't enough, um, guys up in a class to do a call out. So instead they just have everybody line up. They get their ideas for who's going to place where in the back half of the class, they get those people off stage and then they take a closer look at whoever remains. So they had three of us go off. So we know that we're third, fourth, and fifth. Um, and then the other two guys stayed out there. And so based on how masters went where I was third there, I'm thinking, you know, probably fourth or fifth here. Great. And immediately the thought in my head, and I hate going here, but I can't help it. You know, I've said before, I don't really care what the results are, but in the moment you can't not care. Like it, it, today, uh, two days later, do I care? Not really, not really. Um, again, all you walk off stage with after prejudging are your assumptions and your skivvies. That's it. So, uh, but it, in the moment though, it stings here. And the immediate thought was like, okay, so I've been prepping for six months and I could have just not done that and come out of here with the same placings that I'm probably going to get. That's great. So, uh, so anyway, at that point I'm done, I'm like, whatever, let me get out of here. So I go back, I get an Uber back to my Airbnb. I go chill. I don't eat anything because I've had a bunch of, you know, rice cakes, peanut butter, some dried fruit backstage. I got plenty of my stomach. I'm not hungry. Like, let me just lay down and take a nap. You got your spray tan all over all over you, so you're sticky. You got to be careful where you sit, where you lay, so you don't stain the furniture in this place. So I got my black sheets down, so I lay down on those, still fully clothed, just trying not to sweat everything off. Take a nap. I took like three naps between pre-judging and finals. And uh, got some food in me eventually, and would kind of go back and forth between feeling like, I feel pretty tight. Ooh, God, my stomach. Ugh, I feel pretty tight. Ugh, stomach. Ugh. It's not like my stomach hurt. It just was not tight. I had difficulty control it, controlling it. So at that point, I went back, um, got an Uber back to the venue um, for finals. And that's where we'll pick it up the next section. How things played out. Finals edition. So this is where our story takes a little bit of a turn. Uh, so again, same routine uh, for the uh, finals as it was for prejudging, same order of operations. It's just everybody's doing their individual routine now. I expected it to last forever, but honestly, prejudging went pretty quick. I was out of there about two hours after it started. At the end of the day for finals, I was out of there about two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes after finals started. So they moved along pretty quick. Part of it also for finals was they elected not to have the groups come out and do mandatories. They had individual poses. Cool. Class come out, everybody line off to the side. Fifth place, fourth place, third place, second place, winner, off stage, go. So they were moving you along pretty quick, um, which I appreciated. Uh, and so same order of operations. So you're kind of gaming out like how long is this going to be? You know that every person in front of you in line is going to take a minute um, for their posing routine. So you've got to kind of factor that into your decision making a little bit. 
Um, and I feel like um, I did a little bit better job timing the pump up, but still, like, I just didn't feel right in the stomach, didn't feel tight, didn't feel like I was getting the separation in my legs that I wanted to see. So I just kept working on it, working on it, working on it, never really hit it. Um, now, I did make a conscious decision <laughs> beforehand um, of what I wanted to do for my routine. I mean, obviously, you have to plan it out a little bit. It was still fairly spontaneous, but music-wise, that decision has to be made weeks before the show. And I'm glad I chose what I did because everybody chose this super serious music, very dramatic posing, like, oh, I'm so serious. Look at me up on stage. And I decided I was just going to do a skit, basically, with one of our original tunes, um, my band's original tunes that has not yet been released, which means since it's unreleased, I can play it here. So here's a little snippet of it. So that's my wife singing on there. That's me playing guitar, piano. There's some organ in there. And then we had a drummer and a bassist as session guys as well. So really cool song. One of my favorite ones that we've done. And it's fun, right? It's high energy. It's fun. It's just, it's designed to be stupid and goofy. So I just turned it into a skit. There's a little spoken word section that my wife does in the middle of that. I just came on stage and I mouthed that and just made an idiot of myself. And it was probably a little cringeworthy. I'm okay with that just because it was different from everything else that happened up there. And that was really kind of my goal. I just wanted to do something different, have fun with it, and surprise her. I didn't tell her I was doing it. She was in finals for the audience, so it kind of took her by surprise too, which is cool. Um, and so I did that, and so you go out there, you do the routine for the first class that you're a part of, masters, so we're all three out there, and then we get off to the side, and they call out third place, and they call out a number, and I take a half a step towards them, I'm like, wait, that's not my number. Oh, okay, cool. So they start calling out second place. I take a half a step. That's not my number. Wait. And they call me out at first place. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Like, <laughs> like uh, whatever my face looked like right then was the very definition of stunned. Like I had absolutely no expectation of that happening at all. I was beyond floored. I go up and take the center spot and it's like, I don't even remember what happened at that point. Just complete and total shock. Complete and total shock. The other guys look good. You know, the, the photos that I've looked at, I'm like, should I have really gotten first? I don't know. Um, like, it was, a, it was a competitive class. Um, so we go backstage, and I'm still, like, in a daze. I'm like, what the fuck just happened up there? I don't understand this. Okay, so I get back in line. I'm, like, thinking, processing. I'm like, oh, I should probably just keep pumping up. Realizing it doesn't matter, like I don't have to go out and do a routine. I'm out of breath from having done my my routine just now and having jumped around and run around on stage like a jackass for a minute. Uh, and so anyway, wait, wait, wait. More people do their routines, get out there, cool. Um, off to the side, they call out fifth place. It's not me. They call out fourth place. It's not me. They call out third place. That's me. That's cool because you know I know I wasn't top two because they left those other two guys out. So it's the best possible finish I could have had given how prejudging played out. So first master, first place, masters 40 plus, third place, open class C, fuck yeah, I'll take that and I'll be super pleased with that. How do I feel about it today, two days later? I'm still super pleased about it. Does it really change much? No, but it is, I'm not gonna lie, it is gratifying to put in the work that I did, have the struggle that I had towards the end of it, um, and still be able to come out with a respectable showing, uh, was not my best. Um, but it was good enough. It was good enough for that day. So um, now finishing third in the open class, I did not earn my national qualification, which I mentioned last week wouldn't have mattered. Um, if I did earn it, um, I wasn't going to be able to do junior nats anyway. I'm here, right? So uh, that was never going to be, an well, it was an option, but it stopped being an option at some point. So that's how it played out. Uh, so very excited to have it in the books. Um, just two more sections, then we'll wrap this up. 
So immediate post-show aftermath, what happened? Well, um, we had to go and find my car in the parking lot because my wife parked and she didn't know where she parked. So we had to kind of try and retrace steps and find it in one of the parking garages attached to the Chattanooga Convention Center, which turned into being a little bit of an adventure, but we got it. Um, and then we went to a place called Feed, appropriately, uh, in downtown Chattanooga. I had a burger, which was overcooked, um, but still good. Some tater tots, which were spectacular. Mmm, man. Um, and then had some dessert, just a uh, brownie with some ice cream, and it was I think it was like a magic shell syrup that was put over it as well. Um, and had a few bites of my wife's, which she had some kind of something gnocchi. I don't know what it was exactly, but it was good. Walked out of there feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm full. I don't feel disgusting. Um, went back, didn't eat anything else after that. Just kind of, you know, chatted for a bit, went to bed. Um, woke up the next morning. We were planning on doing breakfast in Chattanooga. Decided against it because we had our dogs with us. And just like, let's get the dogs home because they don't like being left in the B&B alone. Um, so we went home, drove through the rain, got them settled in, fed them breakfast, and then went out to a place called Scrambled Jake's close to us. Um, and I just had an omelet an omelet with some potatoes um, and it was great and then from there we hit the grocery store and then it was back on plan um, until I had to make an emergency trip out here to Oregon later that day so we got back home from that whole trip around 11 I took a nap started to do a little bit of work was about to record this video at 2 o'clock when I saw text from my brother and instead went on Google flights got a ticket and I was out of the house two hours later so here I am uh, so that was the immediate aftermath of the show. So there's been zero time really to decompress or do anything yet and probably won't be this week, but that'll come. All right. And lastly, next steps. Well, the next step, and we will dive into this next week. I'm hoping, um, it kind of depends on what plays out here. I don't know how long I'm going to be here at this point. Um, I do have all my gear here so I can do an update from here next week if necessary. Um, but at that point, we're going to game out the off season. So I might hit a gym a couple of times this week. Certainly not today, Monday. Certainly not tomorrow. Probably not Wednesday. Maybe by the end of the week, I might feel like hitting a workout or two just locally around here. Uh, but what we'll do is kind of strategize and game out what's going on for the off season to come, which could be an extensive off season. It could be very long. So there's some considerations that have to be made due to the potential length of it. There's considerations that have to be made in order to maximize how effective the training can be during this phase, because I have areas that I need to bring up, but I also have some physical limitations that I need to work around, as do many people. So I want to take you through my thought process as I go through that. So we'll dive in on that next week. And then we'll see um, what happens beyond that as far as this video series is concerned. It's not going to be a prep vlog going forward, but it'll be a growth season vlog. Maybe it's every two weeks, maybe it's every week. I don't know, we'll see. Um, your feedback would be helpful there. If you wanna see what the process looks like, let me know, drop a comment, let me know what's on your mind. Um, and once again, thank you everybody so much for following along and supporting me as I go through this. Like, it really means a lot. I had my first experience um, with somebody uh, finding me backstage at the show who recognized me off YouTube. So thank you, Chad, for finding me and reaching out. That was cool. It was good to meet you. Good to get a chance to talk to you for a little bit, too. Um, I, did, I didn't stick around for Men's Physique, so I don't know how you did, but I'm curious to see what the results are. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a ride. You know, ain't my first rodeo, but it's my first time actually documenting the process um, every single week going through prep. And I'm glad I did it. And so I want to continue doing this. Um, of course, this video um, right now, it's every Monday. We'll see if that continues. The podcast is every Friday. I'll be throwing up more videos throughout the week as well. Um, this video will probably get a little bit shorter going forward. But anyway, thank you once again, everybody. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you find this kind of content worthy and want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button. Your comments mean everything to me. So go ahead and drop questions, comments, anything that you have for me. I'd take it there. And once again, thank you all so much.